So can we get an update just on where we at here in the third uh, week of the OTAs and uh, what you're hoping to get out of um, I guess the last two of these? Yeah, do like the same thing. Just continue to build up, get ready for the season. Um, things that we've added from the off season, the things we want to work on. And again, this is a passing camp. We know what the rules are, and it's been very beneficial to us. Uh, but we'll continue that build up. It really is what we want to see. Uh, we've added some situational uh, things as we've gone along. You'll see us in the red zone today, that kind of stuff. And transactionally, um, you know, I know y'all said DeBras is going to keep trading. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and you got a new cornerback in, uh, Border. So. Uh, Breon, yeah. So with Breon uh, in Tennessee during the 20 COVID year, um, excited to have Breon, you know, come in here and compete. So see what it looks like going forward. But uh, yeah, d led it's, it's the way that the, everything's gone in the league. It's uh, unfortunate when you have to make moves. I mean, it's never lost on us. There's still a human element to it. We understand that, but it's an opportunity for Breon. You said it before, like, you know, that guys aren't necessarily going to make the team during this time. Of Correct. What, are they, what is something that they do? It's just like D offered last year as a guy that seemed like really put himself in mm-hmm. What do they have to do to maybe put themselves in position? To, is sure. That, is yeah. That I mean, problem? you can make a ton of improvement, Mike. When I say that, it's not dismissing this time of year, but it's, it's putting things in the context about, you know, what ultimately is going to come down to is how people perform in August throughout the preseason as we lead up to the regular season when you got to make that last. Well, now there's you know one giant cut down. So that's what I just put in that perspective. Like, you know, when you're dealing with issues up front, like we're not going full speed. You know, you're not going to be evaluating a lot of the live blocks, we're certainly not tackling. Um, but when you get into some of the movement skills and really scheme and the communication, you see how people developed, develop. I mean, things that you are evaluating this time of year that show up, the consistency. Guy may make a mistake one day, fixes it, continues to improve. Those are things that jumped out with D last year uh, and, and still jump out to, to me this year. He's, another, he's a guy that continues uh, to improve, and uh, we're excited. But, yeah, he's had a great spring you know, in, in that relative context. Uh, I wouldn't say, put it that way, Mike, but there's certain things when, you know, that's our job. Uh, when you're making certain transactions, well, we think a guy may be a better scheme fit or there's a maybe a better opportunity somewhere else. We know, hey, schematically, this isn't going to fit for the player, but the player is good enough to play. He may go somewhere else. Um, so, you know, I don't – I know that the way you asked it, but I think with the context, it helps. But you certainly um, – when you want to add somebody, you're going to have to make make a move here in 90. You have spoken before about appreciating the improvement you saw from Desmond from his first start to game right. three and four. Uh, I, know we saw, I know what we saw statistically, but can you talk about what you saw specifically that you liked it? And, ha- and has he been able to continue that momentum in this offense? Yes. I mean, gone on record many times about it. I mean, we're talking. Uh, when you, when you go out there and you start for the first time in your career, you can go back with history and see guys that, even as rookies, played more than that. Um, and a lot of guys that have struggled and been able to, to work through it. There's been guys that have gone into situations that are hadn't put a, you know everything on their back, and they've been around really solid defenses and kind of managed the game. And they, as they grew and they got that second contract, and you're starting to really win because of them. Uh, we've seen guys that, like I said, uh, I think the Peyton Manning story is a, right. He broke the the interception record. Um, go back. There's some great hot takes. You look at Peyton Manning. Uh, you know, before they got rolling in Indy, it's kind of comical when you look at it now. But when you go back and look at history, so I'm not putting Des in that category. So nobody, please don't mince my words and says, "Hey, coach, compared him to this great player." You see a lot of that BS going on this time of year, which is comical. But that's not what I'm saying. So the improvement, you know, those four starts. You're looking at the situational stuff he handles. Right. I mean, you may get off to a rough start. You know, can you can you settle down? Can you adapt? You see what their game plan is, and it's those critical downs. Third down, I talk about all the time. Third down, red zone, two minute. And I thought he made a lot of strides there. Um, and then this time of year, as we continue to enhance the offense, but he's not learning a new language. 
you know, he, we knew his leadership traits. Those were real. You see those now that he feels like, hey, this is my turn to, to speak out. Uh, that's all the stuff right now you know, you're, you're evaluating, and we've been very pleased with it. Yeah, uh, Taylor's been been a great addition to the room, and uh, I go on record too that Logan Woodside's done a nice job too. And so, you know, those things you got to take in consideration. The rules change, right? To where if you, that's the way we want to go, well, we certainly have made that decision now. But if you want to address three quarterbacks, they got to be under 53. So there's more opportunities, and in a league where I think. Especially with the linemen and the quarterbacks, uh, you're trying to find every way possible to develop guys. I think that's, a, that's an obstacle you got to try to get creative to overcome. And I've been very pleased with both Taylor and what he's added to that room and then what Logan's done. The improvement Logan's made from when I first saw him in 2018, when I was with him in 19 and 20, and what he's done so far. So uh, pleased with that room. Yeah. How are you evaluating the progress? Is it that they, they make a mistake, they're able to correct it type of thing? Or? Well, some of it. And there's a lot of things you're, you're evaluating. You know, the, the day after day, there's always, and this will, same thing will happen to the camp, is the same thing happens to the season. You see the people that come out, you know, smoking out of the gate, and all of a sudden they get fatigued, whether it's physically or mentally, and they start to trail off. It's a little bit what I was talking about the other day. Again, people can take a headline, and I don't blame them. I mean, like, when I was talking about planning to play 2021, I would hope every team is. I mean, that's the, a lot of time. And if you're not getting yourself physically and mentally ready to, to go through a long season, a long campaign, I would, I would think that would be just about every team in this league, maybe the exception of one or two. And that's kind of what I was talking about. It's a build up to it. So it's the same when you're going about day to day in the OTAs are what are you really evaluating? You're evaluating their daily habits, how they handle the schemes you're throwing at them, special teams the learning, the application, even the drills. I mean, that's what you're trying to look for. It's the people that are doing like what looks like an EKG that you're not really get excited about. So if we can, that, I don't know what medical chart there is. Somebody smarter than me can figure that out if there is one. But that's kind of what you're looking for. Who's your little intern today? Uh, that's my daughter, Sophie. Uh, Tanner's here, too, and that's my oldest. Uh, they didn't want to go to their school camp, and so <laughs> we'll find we'll find more for them to do here. Uh, they were actually more fired up when I showed them the digital media studio this morning. I didn't realize what the YouTube award is, and I was telling uh, Bassity they got real fired up about the YouTube. There's a thing for a certain number of subscribers. Yeah, so <laughs> learn something new every day, even from your kids. But uh, fired up, they're able to come over here to work. In terms of what do you mean, like? Just different things that you want to see him progress with. Yeah, I mean, there's things that we throw at him. Like, we're going to constantly evolve. Like, we'll never step away from our core values with the intent and the way we want to play and the type of players we want in here and you know, the accountability and the growth we try to preach on our guys, whether they're going into their 16th year or, you know, second year. Uh, but we – and I would – argue that our facts back that up. Just watch how we played in 21 to what we did last year. And we'll be a little bit different this year. Um, and that's our job. You know, you're not going to have the same team year after year, but there's a certain culture that Rose gets run, thrown around a lot. It's pretty vague. And but that those are the things that we, we preach and we work on. But schematically, we're, we're going to adapt. And so when you go out this time of year, there's some things that we've studied in the offseason Things we obviously carry over. There's things we want to enhance, little small nuances that, unless you're in the meetings, you wouldn't recognize sometimes. But how's he handled that? And I think he's handled that really well. I don't get all excited, you know, if you have the wrong building and in the, in the, in the, you live and die with the day to day narratives and you don't have the whole building in sync. I've seen where people get sideways. All of a sudden they're charting like completion percentage. I promise you, you're talking about manipulating something. If I wanted to manipulate and feel good, 
and want to play a lot of soft zone, I could get his completion things up. I think Sophie could, could hit a couple check downs. No offense, Sophie. <laughs> but, and then we could feel warm and fuzzy. Oh, he was at 90% accuracy in a, in a seven on seven in an OTA. It's ridiculous. Like, so the four, uh, what we're able to do, what we're trying to push and progress, uh, feel very confident. And that's our job. We're going to challenge our guys and we're going to challenge ourselves as coaches to improve. So I take that with context as we build up into the regular season. And I, I don't have like that flat benchmark like, oh, wow, I feel warm and fuzzy because Des went six for seven in the first OTA period. You know, he hit three check downs and a really soft underneath route versus, you know, Tampa two, whatever. We don't have those, but we do measure his progress. And there's a lot of things that we get into that we, that we track, that we feel are actual relative to the job. We're going to ask him to do uh, starting September 10th. Yeah, I think um, it's going to be fun during training camp. I think you're going to watch. It's going to be like Rocky Ford, Nielsen versus Ledford, um, <laughs> going back to their days at NC State. You know, they're both they're both front guys at heart. Uh, that's their passion. But all all the people we've hired here are passionate in their own way. Like I don't I don't want 24 carbon copies of myself. Like you got to be yourself. We we hire guys for a reason. Usually because they're smart, they're passionate, they're problem solvers. They got they got unbelievable work ethic, and uh, so when you when you that's kind of your your compass to to find the right coaches. We feel that we got a lot of great teachers, and Jerry he does it his own way. But Ryan uh, certainly is intense. But I'm looking forward to the uh, Nielsen Ledford training camp. Might they've been uh, competing in the weight room, even though they're not out there. They take that They're not competing with each other, but they're just. Kind of throwbacks. So, yeah, going back to the seven on seven, though, we were taught, um, you know, uh, Who was Sherman we? Lewis, uh, me and the, the older guys. Okay. Uh, Sherman Lewis and uh, Hunger and them would say, you know, there were times where the ball never touched the ground with uh, Montana and Young. And then that's what their measurement stick was for far. So, that's why we look at the seven on seven to see. It's everybody handles seven on seven. I mean, there's some teams that live and die by the seven on seven. I think things evolve. Those guys were, they had a lot of success and they had their ways of, of doing things. Sure, sure. I mean, you go by Jerry Rice, a great example. Mm -hmm. Let's look at Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice played, what, 19 years? Yeah. You go back and watch NFL films. Can somebody give me the load management of Jerry Rice? Because I've watched things where he, he talks about running you know, tons and tons of full speed reps on Friday. Right. Like, I think now you'd have some of these really guys that would be scared to death that they watched how Jerry Rice worked. But somehow he found out to play 19 years. Um, so, Jerry, uh, glad you brought him up. That's a, that's a great example of an old school work ethic that would still apply today. Now, what those guys probably did, and again, they, led, they, they had a lot of success. It's like when I, when I hear coaches sometimes uh, feel like they're method actors use a whole Bill Walsh cliche that was a, a, applied 40 years ago before you could really change the rosters the way you do it and then all the transactions and, you know, use some of those. And I think they apply today on the surface. That makes me kind of laugh. So those guys obviously use the seven on seven for a different reason. I, I don't remember off the top of my head what the schemes were they were playing against. Uh, it, again, those were, you now maybe they let you in the meeting, right? Did they let you, you told me they used to let you in the training room. So they didn't yeah. let you in the meetings. So those are a lot of them that were, were true progression offenses. There's so many different variations of that. So a lot of people, they just copy and say, oh, it's West Coast. Okay, you go back to, to Bill Walsh. And can you, that, that offense, the style he wanted to play, that kind of evolved from Paul Brown, right, a necessity of trying to supplement the run game. And then that took it to another level. And they had the same players over and over and over again, he led. And then you talk about the timing, the spacing, the trust of those things, and that was a progression in the way the defense were playing. Now you're getting all these hybrids, you're getting all these crazy post-snap looks and these crazy blitzes coming from them. And again, it's a math game. And there's a lot of offenses. You go back to the run and shoot. So if you had covered the Oilers or been here early on with June Jones, they probably would have educated you a little bit different way. Both of them had unbelievable success. So I'm not going to get into these active schemes, but there's – that's their method. If you're going to be a progression, 
West Coast and they're in zone. They felt good about that. Clearly that carried over for them and that worked for their team. The way we've evolved, there's a lot of things we ask the quarterback to do that we try to take advantage of. That's why a lot of times you get these people on these talk shows or this, what, they sat in a quarterback meeting room and, well, this is where Sharon Lewis taught me. This is how you do it. You can take the same play and go to 30 other buildings and a little tweak. It may be a, 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 an advantage throw. You may get one-on-one -on, -one on the backside. So you say, screw your progression. I'm going to take that. You may say, hey, look, we're getting this coverage. Hey, we're going to start over here. A lot of ways to do it. That's what makes this game fascinating. So a little bit of part of that, I got it. Those guys, and that's taking not a damn thing away from them because they were wildly successful. But there's different ways you measure it. They may not get as excited at team run as I do. Or they may not get excited about the play action stuff as I do. Right? Correct. So, different philosophies. Like, uh, like, like I said, I mean, you get some guys that get up there and they talk about, you have to do this, the footwork has to be right. And then I watch some of the guys that have thrown for 5,000 yards take a 12 step drop, and it's like a magician back there and throw back across. Is that a great play call or is that two great players? I don't know. We can have that debate all day, too. So I'll get off my soapbox, but there's a lot of ways to do it, and there's more than one. So, like, the run game. Yeah, those guys had a lot of success there, and there's some, there's some unbelievable coaches. And some of them have a Boston can, and some of them probably deserve a Boston can. Saw Avery Williams go out. Um, at the yeah. Yeah, so Avery, uh, he'll probably be done for the year. So it's unfortunate. Um, but that's, and I'll officially know more. He's going to have a procedure done tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, Avery's his roles changed for, certainly from year one to year two, where it didn't change in the kicking game, certainly as our punt returner. Uh, there'll be opportunities. There'll be plenty of opportunities for Mike Hughes or the Offord or Penny Hart. Somebody will step up, Josh Ali. Uh, it's unfortunate, but, you know, in an unfortunate situation, I hope because of the player Avery is, he'll wholeheartedly he'll come back better and improved. and. Uh, it's unfortunate, you know, similar to when we lost Jaden Graham out there at a practice on a non-contact. Uh, you, you study it, you look at it, you take things into context. How do we educate ourselves? You know, some things that you just you can't control, but what you can control, you look at. I think, you know, we had Jaden Graham our first year, similar. AJ McCarron, that was in a preseason game down in Miami. Uh, Derek Tangelo in a practice last year out there, and then now, unfortunately, Avery. So all a little bit different, but there are some similarities that you try to look look at. Uh, we love Avery. Uh, he's got the right mindset, and I fully expect him to come back ready to roll. It was no, no, it was an ACL. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah, coach. Just as we fast forward to Sunday, uh, looking ahead to the mini camp, uh, what are what are some of the things you want to get done at the mini camp? And same thing. I mean, it's going to be. Yeah, I mean, you'll have more people here. No, we can't put pads. Are you trying to get me fined? I know the rules. Go ahead. That would not be a fun summer paying that check and uh, cost this organization. I will never do that to this place. Uh, it'll be very similar to that. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to get into specifics. But here, here's. In, in a, in what is a bad news, and take it as a context, but it, it is a good sign that he's, a, he's having a procedure done tomorrow. Because those, those are, when you really look at it, you know, and people, if anybody's dealt with it, I mean, I looked up the stat, I mean, there's 250,000 people a year. They say that deal with it. Uh, one of my siblings did it in a, a skiing thing. Uh, did you do it, Elon? Yeah. Yeah. So you've dealt with it. So I think it's encouraging. And what it is, a, Force the situation that he's able to have that procedure done pretty early. Anything else? Thank you. All right, thanks, coach. Appreciate it, guys.